We've got right. you know six great magistrates that represent our districts. And, and they've in all of them, the minus one had actually been reelected. So they, they've got a lot of experience with, uh, you know, with, with what happened uh, in the past. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jack and Terry show. Our special guest today is Troy Koch. He is the newly elected judge executive in Meade County, Kentucky, and he's a former general officer in the United States Army. Judge, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate it. Absolutely, our pleasure. And of course, I'm with my co-host, Jack Konecki, the granddaddy of all small businesses in, Rad in Radcliffe. Jack, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Terry. Good to see you, Judge. The other day, I was riding through Meade County over there in Brandenburg, and that business corridor over there is hopping. I don't know if you've been over there lately, but it's amazing what's going on over there. Virtually every commercial space is filled with the business. I know that there's a lot going on over there. And uh, I'm sure that that uh, everything is hopping. And that's yeah. the way we want it to do. We want them to run over and and that has helped them in Radcliffe too. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a great job over there. A lot of business development on that corridor. Well, Judge, it's great to have you on here today. Our first question is this, and we always ask people what inspired them to do things. What inspired you to run for Judge Executive in Mead well, County? <laughs> well, Terry, it, it, it's actually kind of funny because I hadn't thought about it. Um, you know, when I was in, uh, when I was in the Army, uh, one of my commands was when I was in charge of the East Coast, and, and I had a lot of opportunity to deal with a lot of politicians that were, I uh, managed the 13 Northeastern states from Maine to Virginia, West Virginia, to Pennsylvania, and so got really involved in, in keeping our congressmen and senators of those states up, up to speed on what the things that the Army Reserve was doing. Um, and, and I found that, uh, you know, by keeping them informed, it actually create, created a situation where we didn't get a lot of issues. Uh, you know, they, if they did have an issue, we, we got the respect of them giving us time to, you know, they would call us in advance. Uh, we were able to work it and get the information back. And I, I tell you, I never had any hot buttons. I never got called on the carpet or, and, and it's really a great way to, it was a great way to work. And there was some great lessons. Let's fast forward uh, to, uh, well, not December last year, the year before, and uh, I had a gentleman that was with me. Uh, he is on our uh, Association of United States Army Board, which I'm the president for the Fort Knox chapter. And uh, uh, he came on up to me and he asked, he said, uh, hey, uh, would you be interested in, no kidding, would you be interested in running for judge executive uh, of Meade County? And I said, uh, well, I, I said, I, I don't know, uh, but, uh, you know, first of all, what is a judge executive? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the judge executive is like the CEO of the county. I guess mm -hmm. that's the best way that I could, you know, compare it to things that I know. I went ahead and uh, having been in the Army for 37 and a half years, uh, I was an independent. And I went to the courthouse and I filed in, in under the Republican Party. And right. put my candidacy in. And so that was the start. Wow. Well, I don't think Meade County would have could have found a person with more executive level experience. What kind of challenges? Now, of course, you I know you did the research before you actually took office, but it's hard to get really all the all the information you need since you were coming in from the outside. But what kind of challenges did you discover that you weren't aware of once you got in there, Judge? So, you know, so, you know, first of all, coming in, you know, turning on some of that background that I have is, is I wanted to kind of walk in and, and I, don't want, I don't like to make changes. Um, you know, doing assessing, I, I assessed, uh, you know, from there I started coming up with, you know, as I find certain things, you know, we either addressed them on, you know, at the time and, and or we started to develop certain plans. And so, um, there were a lot of things that I found that, uh, so initially, you know, the, what the judge executive does, we, we run and I work with fiscal court and we've got, right. you know, six great magistrates that represent 
our districts. And, and they've in all of them minus one had actually been reelected. So they, they've got a lot of experience with, uh, you know, with, with what happened uh, in the past. It was, you know, a really big issue that I walked in before my first day of office. And, and that was, I'm sure you all are familiar, you know, with the water crisis that we had here in Meade County that happened on December 23rd, where a good portion of our county uh, did not have water. I mean, the water was turned off and, and it, was, it was caused through a, a culmination of different events that identify a critical, a critical shortfall mm -hmm. that we have in our county. And now it's not just important to everybody, but, but it's identified. And so now that gives me the ability working through, you know, again, our great magistrates, working through our water company, working through um, you know, Nancy Tate and Steve Meredith, you know, our, rep our great representatives, mm -hmm. you know, now we can try to look at, we know where we are, but where do we need to go? We understand the, and we, we identify what the problem sets are. And then we methodically work through the ones that we can achieve first. And then we put the next ones in the next step. Mm -hmm. And to eventually we get to the point where we're a producer, which is a water plant. Mm, yep. And and that's how we now we walk into uh, again to to our great representatives so that they can now to take that fight, you know, to to our state represent, you know, to our okay. state and get us the resources that we need so that we can get where we need to be. You know, a lot of people in these localities, and I only know this from my time on the city council here, I mean, the highest priority for local government, by far the highest priority is public safety. And when you get to the point where you can't provide water, we're talking about a, we're talking about the worst possible public safety catastrophe you could have other than a, a storm blew the city away. But yeah, I mean, public safety is the main priority and everybody in, uh, Everybody in the public doesn't always see that. They see a smaller project like I need my road paved. I need this. I need that. You only have a limited amount of resources to provide for safety, public works, and public administration. Yeah. Well, Judge, I want to leave you with the last word here. Maybe tell us what's next. What are you working on? Any final things okay. you want to let folks know? But I want to thank you in advance of that for coming on the show today and sharing a few minutes with us. Well, I appreciate it so much. You know, what, one of the great uh, initiatives that we just started on was uh, uh, we had our first animal control advisory board last night. Uh, it's to take our animal control of where it's at and, and move it into the future so that we can we can turn we can make our animal control into what I hope to see is one of the best uh, in, in in our seven county area. Um, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. But again, getting citizens involved in that that have, you know, have a lot of experience in all aspects of, you know, through uh, uh, the PINS program, Pets in Needs and, and, and uh, Guardians and having veterinarians involved with that. And everybody has, you know, pluses and minuses that they can add. You know, I really, I was really excited when, when everybody met last night and everybody was very excited because Again, they, they care about it and, and we want to make it better. But how do we make it better and how do we make it better together? And so that was a, a it was really a, a really, a, it was a fun meeting, uh, if I want to say. And then I was able to, you know, give vision and guidance. And then I've turned it over to them to come up with the solution. And uh, I think that's, you know, that's the way community should work. Um, you know, we've, we've got some really neat things going on uh, that's in, in, Coming up here soon, uh, we've got the Buttermilk, Buttermilk Falls uh, Day that's going to be on April 22nd. That's down at the riverfront. Uh, that's a combined project that's, you know, kind of worked with Nucor, giving us some property. But we've extended that, that trail that when you go down to the waterfront, it goes all the way from there, all the way out to where Nucor is. And then, and, and so it's become a pedestrian walkway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, just a, uh, a a nature trail. Uh, there's a number of other things that we're developing with uh, bike trails and things of that nature. So a really a great opportunity for the community to to go out and have recreation. 
Great. Uh, yeah. That's a beautiful park, by the way. Yeah, sure. It is a beautiful park. Now, the big thing that's coming up, though, and, and I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. So this is Meade County's bicentennial. And so Meade County actually will be 200 years old. On, I believe it's the 23rd of December, but we're not going to freeze everybody by having a party in December. So we have backed it up and we're going to have a big celebration down at the waterfront on, on May 20th. Uh, and we'll have fireworks there. Um, I believe we're going to have um, just all parts of the community representing the old and the new. Uh, all, all the farmers from the local, from the area are going to bring out their old tractors, you know, and I mean, if you've not seen tractors, I mean, you talk about from where, you know, where farm equipment's been to where it is today. And, uh, and I'll let, I, you know, I've actually seen some of these, you know, these, these tractors and they're, they're amazing to look at. I mean, it's, they're really cool, but you know, that's a part of what our community is. This is part of our past. We're a farming community. And so, you know, I think that that representation is extremely important, not just with where they're at, but then where is our community going and how do we retain those values, uh, you know, from where we were to where we are today and how do we continue those values in our society today because it makes great people. Absolutely. Well, Judge, I want to thank you for coming on. Folks, thank this was Judge. Troy Koch, he is the newly elected judge executive in Meade County, Kentucky. He's doing an awesome job over there. He learned a lot of things in a very short time, and he's <laughs> dealing with a lot of interesting challenges. He's a former general officer in the United States Army, and he brings an, ex an extreme amount of executive level experience to the role, and he's off to a great start. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Terry. Jack, you have a great and fantastic weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Jack, it was good seeing you, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Good to see you, Terry, and thank you so much for being with us, Judge. Thank you so much.